Welcome back YouTubers. Uh, this is an addendum to the uh, last video so I'm going to post them at the same time uh, saying number one and number two so this will be number two. Um, train for you. Come on you can do it. There it is. Uh, oils. Back to the back to the oil. Uh, I was uh, you know, loading my video and, and doing a little maintenance on it, you know, before I put it on YouTube. And uh, I was noticing this and it was like, wait a minute, I didn't buy the synthetic. Um, so here's my thing about oil. Yeah, you can use the 1040, that's not, that's not a problem. But in this flavor uh, from Walmart, it's uh, fifteen dollars for 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 uh, you know conventional oil, and sixteen dollars for five quarts of synthetic. So what's a buck? So I, I looked and I looked and I looked for some ten forty, and they didn't have it. So I ended up having to front ten dollars more, and I got the uh, ten forty mobile one. I'm a big believer in synthetic oil. I like synthetic, so I'm going to I'm going to use that. What's the difference between a conventional oil and a synthetic oil? Um, uh, conventional oil is made of uh, is made of uh, mineral oil, and uh, synthetic oil is made of pixie farts. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, uh, synthetic oil is is uh, still mineral oil. It still comes from the ground, but it has a lot of additives in it that keep it from um, losing its viscosity when it gets hot. And in this car, if it gets hot, you don't want it to lose its viscosity. So I always do the uh, this fail safe. It's not much more, especially when you're buying this. It's a buck more if you're buying this. If you're buying this, it's uh, $25 opposed to 15 Still, if you buy it in the big bottles, it's you know you it's 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 pretty cheap. So, uh, I drained that out, and uh, and I don't know what I'm going to use this for. I mean, start fires with or something. I don't even use it in my lawnmowers. Uh, it, it's synthetic. I I I use synthetic in everything. So, um, but they're not fussy. So, but but that's just me. Okay, um, this. Uh, car here we have the engine uh, the valve set and it really close on number uh, uh, or uh, uh, on uh, the timings really close at 7.5 uh, everything is really close but you can dial it in a little more okay and when you dial it in a little more the engine needs to be warm so what we're going to do is we're going to check the dwell angle and the dwell angle it's difficult to explain to some people I understand it it's 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 a cam angle is what it is um, it's the number of degrees the distributor cam terms turns while a distributor breaker points are closed in other words when the points are closed there's a certain amount of degrees it has to turn before it opens and the width of the points uh, determines this. And the uh, dwell is supposed to be between, it says between 44 and, four, and 50. So 46, 48, somewhere in that neighborhood. Brian says 48, I think. But, you know, if I'm in that neighborhood, I think I'm pretty good. Uh, older points are a little different. So we're going to check the dwell first. And then we're going to do an engine running uh, stroboscopic uh, uh, method of timing and what this does is you have you know a, a crank gear and then you have a distributor gr drive gear and there's a little bit of lash in there and while the engines running it takes that lash up and it gets you closer on your mark with a, with a with a, stro a, a strobe light but I've never used that, never have, but I'm going to show you how to do it. And I've never used a dwell tack on a Volkswagen either. I have on an old Buick where I had a key where I could adjust it just finitely, I mean just very nicely and neatly. Uh, this piece here was given to me when I was 16 years old by a friend for my birthday, and so I've had it all these years. <laughs> so we got actual use for this, 
and we will uh, proceed. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start the car up and then we'll check the dwell, then we'll check the, or warm it up, and then we'll check the, uh, the uh, timing using the uh, strobe light. But we'll also uh, block off the port on the carburetor uh, for the uh, vacuum advance and we'll suck on that vacuum advance with our mouth and see if the timing marks move because we want to see I know they will because when I do the plate moves inside the distributor but I just want to show you that that it works that the uh, vacuum advance works when we get done with that so we'll have our valve set right the engine warm uh, the, the cam angle correct or, or the dwell correct the timing correct, then we can set the carburetor and I'll go into that next once we get this done. Okay, I have my dwell meter hooked up. The green wire goes to the distributor. If you can't find a power, use the one on the end of the choke. I just use my fuel pump for the ground. If you look at the four cylinder mark, we're right at 48. Maybe 47 and a half. That's close enough for me. Now we're going to do an RPM check. We're at about 1,200 RPM right now. So we're going to need to adjust that. Let's look at our timing. Spot on. Right on the money. Did you hear that step up? That means the vacuum advance works in my distributor. Let's have a look and see if our thermostat's open. Yet. It's starting to, but not all the way yet. Okay, we're going to adjust the carburetor next. Uh, before we go on adjusting on the carburetor, I wanted to make another note. Uh, you need to take and uh, check your timing with the uh, advance. Uh, pulled off the, the vacuum, pulled off of the advance, plugged up, which I did again and it's still spot on. So um, uh, I, I didn't do it for video sake because it's such a pain in the ass holding this and trying not to ground out in, in, in uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, okay. The engine is warm. And uh, first you want to start out with the engine warm and the choke open. And the engine is warm. 
and the choke is open. And I also want to tell you that this screw here, your idle adjustment screw, should not be touching the cam. Okay, it should not be touching the cam. It's backed off just a little bit. Your idle comes from the, the air screw. Uh, turn your, turn your, uh, your uh, mix your screw in all the way and then and then grab a hold of your screwdriver with both hands and give it a good bear down and, and, and if you vibrate a little bit it'll really get it in there no don't do that um, it, it, it just turn it in until it's until you feel it bottom don't get it in there real you know don't twist it in there real hard uh, and then turn it out two and a half turns Two and a half to three turns. Two and a half, so two to three. Two and a half is okay. Okay, and then you're going to start your car, and then we're going to, with the tachometer, we're going to adjust this down to 800 RPM. Then once you get it to 800 RPM, you go back into this screw here and adjust it in or out where it's giving you the max revs. So the, the sweetest spot of that. So let's do that. Okay, that's 800 rounds. I'm about 850 now. There you go, that's how it's done. Now I can put all my snorters, pipes, grinders, guns, switchblade knives on this and I'll be done. I can button it up and it'll be all finished. So there you go, your air cleaner and your hoses and stuff. Um, one thing, I want to show you this, okay? And remember, this carburetor is not for this car. So uh, is my engine going to run exactly like it's supposed to? Nope. It sure won't. But the thing is, it's about beggars and choosers, okay? Don't have money to buy a rebuild kit and your brother just sends you a nice clean uh, carburetor for this car. Not for this car, but it's for um, 06970 uh, that fits the intake. It's a little bit bigger carb. I think it's jetted a little bit bigger. Maybe it's faster, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not the right carb for the car. So I do have the correct one in time. Uh, will I rebuild it? Probably. And put it on here? Probably. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, this engine runs slick now. It runs good. So uh, thank you for being with me and uh, thank you for 
uh, watching me break out the old uh, dwell tack <laughs> in, in timing light. I wouldn't think I, and for a million years I would ever use them again. You know, I never used them on a Volkswagen. Uh, but I did read the book and uh, and uh, Brian commented on it uh, in an email and uh, so I sat down and read the book and, and uh, yeah, so uh, do it with a strobe and then uh, dwell it also. And then that way, then you can set your set your uh, carburetor. So, all good. Hey, thanks guys for hanging out with me. And uh, keep on bugging, okay? See ya.